All right, welcome everyone. Let's get started. We are happy to chat with you all today about Facebook's audience network. I'm Katie and I'm here with Clara. Hi guys, I'm Clara and work on marketing for an audience network. I work on our mobile partnerships team here at Facebook and Clara and I have been helping developers get started with the audience network since about May when we announced the product at F8. So today we're going to take you through some basics about the product and then dive into a few tips on optimization. Uh, we will save the last five or 10 minutes, give or take, for any questions you have. So if anything comes up as we go along, definitely uh, enter any questions you have into your control panel and we'll aggregate those and get to as many as we can at the end. Great. So to kick us off, in talking about the audience network, one of the best places to start is really to talk about the mobile advertising ecosystem. So you've all heard it a million times, time spent on mobile is huge and growing. Um, people are spending an average of 170 minutes per day on their phone, and that is a huge opportunity for advertisers to reach people who might be interested in their brand on mobile. So, Today, traditional ad networks make reaching the right users pretty difficult, and mostly that's because there are pretty limited and inaccurate targeting options available to advertisers. So even if you know who you want to target, uh, who you're actually reaching can be a bit of a game of guess who for advertisers. So the current system doesn't work for advertisers because of this lack of targeting, but it's actually for the same reason that it also isn't working very well for the users within your apps. So in this study that you're looking at here, when asked why they didn't click on a mobile ad, the majority of people are reporting that they didn't click on those ads because A, the ads aren't relevant to them, or B, they aren't interested in the offering. So this means it's not only that advertisers are not getting great results, but also that people are having a negative experience when they see ads on mobile um, because they're not seeing anything that's interesting to them. So advertisers can't target people. People don't see very relevant ads. This affects publishers too. So for you as a developer and a publisher, it means it's hard to monetize your app with ads. And with a smaller number of people engaging with ads, it means that there's a lot less revenue to be made. So here you're looking at the monthly revenue of developers uh, and what they're making through ads. Over 80% of apps that monetize with ads make less than $10,000 a month. So let that sink in. That's a pretty small number of apps making enough money through ads to sustain their businesses. The bottom line here with these numbers is that when users see irrelevant ads, it's really hard for you to monetize your business. So monetization wasn't easy for Facebook either. Only three years ago, we were completely desktop focused and had no revenue on mobile, even though our users were quickly transitioning to mobile. You guys have all seen the stories. This was a big question during our IPO, whether we could monetize these users effectively. Over the past few years, we were able to figure out how to monetize our mobile inventory. And today, more than two thirds of our revenue comes from mobile. But monetizing our mobile inventory wasn't easy. We couldn't just take our desktop ads and move them onto mobile. The screen's too small, they didn't look good. So we knew we had to create a new advertising experience that worked on mobile, one that worked for the people on Facebook and one that worked for our advertisers. Like all companies that go through these kinds of big transitions, we learned a lot of things, and honestly, we tried a lot of things that didn't work. But most importantly, we learned two lessons. Traditional lessons of advertising still work on mobile. You need to reach the right people at the right time. And it's important to think about the user first. We needed to design an ad that looked and felt right within our experience. So we made ads part of the experience. When I get up, instead of the paper, I read newsfeed on my phone. It shows me the important news stories as well as updates from my friends and family. And I think this is true for a lot of our users. They'll check Facebook and, and see a lot of interesting stories for them. But they'll hopefully also see ads that are relevant. Uh, one example of this is one of my colleagues has three young children. When she looks at her newsfeed, she sees a lot of birthday parties, vacations, funny kid videos. Um, she also might be likely to see an ad for a deal on kids' clothing. Because rather than being disruptive to her experience, we hope the ad complements the other content she's seeing. So our relevant ads have worked for us on mobile. And now through the audience network, we're ready to bring our ads to your app. So let's take a minute and watch a quick video about the audience network.
It can be challenging to make money from mobile ads in your app. That's because when ads don't work for people, nobody wins. With Audience Network, we provide a mobile advertising experience for your app that works for everyone. Just pick the ad format that's right for your app. From banners and interstitials to customizable native ads that match the look and feel of your app. Then, Facebook's network of advertisers, using Facebook's accurate targeting, shows your audience ads they want to see from brands they care about. So you can build a business from the app you worked hard to create. So as the video just touched on, the audience network enables you as a publisher to show your users Facebook ads that are relevant to them from brands that they're interested in. It also allows you to match those ads to the look and feel of your app so that you're creating a seamless experience for your users. And we know that that's you know, at the top of your mind as app developers. So how does this work? The audience network is a pretty simple integration. Many of the partners that both of us have worked with over the past few months um, have gone live really quickly, sometimes in a day or two. So the, again, the integration is pretty simple. Basically, you're dropping in the audience network SDK, and through that, we're able to match the user's, uh, the user's device ID or advertising ID to their Facebook account. We then run our auction and return your user an ad as if the user were on Facebook's newsfeed. So the end result is that your users will see ads that are relevant to them and then hopefully have a higher likelihood to engage with that sponsored content. This in turn, obviously for you guys, leads to higher publisher revenue because people are engaged with content that matters to them. Um, a quick note about mediation. A lot of you guys are probably using mediation services. If you are, you can plug in the audience network. Um, it's compatible with DFP, Mopub, AdMarvel, and others as well. So we've talked a lot about the importance of targeting. Let's look at some numbers there. So when you compare narrowly targeted campaigns of other ad networks to Facebook, our targeting shows ads to be over twice as accurate, according to the Nielsen study that we're showing you here. Um, I'll give you an example of what I mean. So if you ran a campaign, and again, here we're defining a narrowly campaign, a narrowly targeted campaign to mean something like, for example, you're targeting men ages 18 to 24, say on the East Coast, say who are interested in basketball. Um, on Facebook, you would be twice as likely to actually reach that specific demographic with your targeting than if you were using another network. So all of this targeting that applies on Facebook um, you reap the benefits of as a publisher in the audience network because you harness all that targeting to show people the most relevant ads to them. So we're talking about how important targeting is. Um, let's talk a little bit more about what ads your users will see. So advertisers target users based on Facebook data like age, location, gender, interests. A lot of you guys are probably advertisers yourself. You're probably really familiar with this. Um, as an advertiser, you can also layer on your own data, upload it to Facebook, and it gives you even more information to make sure you're reaching out to the right people. So what we're looking at here, for example, is three of our colleagues. Um, one is an avid Game of Thrones watcher, and he might get an ad about a Game of Thrones audiobook. Um, another is a parent of three kids who love to sing the song Let It Go <laughs> and is going to see an ad maybe about Frozen, and so on. So as a publisher, you can imagine if your app couldn't tell the difference between these different interests and different types of people. Without this type of targeting, not only would the user experience be poor, but advertisers fail to reach the right people. So our system can tell the difference between Deb and Ime and Ilya, who you're all looking at on screen, uh, which is harder than you might think on mobile, and, and make sure that they're seeing ads that are relevant and interesting to those users, which again, in turn for you, makes those ads monetize a lot better. The audience network also shows people ads from the brands they care about because the audience network connects your app with the over 1.5 million advertisers on Facebook. When advertisers set up their campaigns, they have the option of extending their campaigns with all the same targeting and their creative to the audience network. Campaigns for link ads and app ads are opted into the audience network by default. 
This means your users will see quality, hyper-targeted ads from large brands, direct response advertisers, mobile app install advertisers, re-engagement advertisers, and of course, SMBs. And this is something we hear from our developer partners all the time. They're really satisfied with the high quality of ads and, and advertisers they're seeing in their app. Uh, the Audience Network also gives publishers the flexibility to choose between multiple ad formats across phones and tablets. We offer standard IAB banners, full screen interstitials, and our native ads. And our native ads are something we're really excited about, um, and they're pretty new to the industry. Native ads give you the ability to design an ad that fits seamlessly into your app experience. And this is what's similar to what Facebook did with our app. We designed an ad that fit into our newsfeed seamlessly. So you guys can be as creative as you want here, as long as you respect the integrity of the advertiser's assets. For those of you that are wondering, our native ads work by taking the metadata of the ads, the text, image, CTA, app rating, other properties, and pass these to you to enable you to create a rich customized experience for your app. It's also important to note that we repurpose all our demand for each format, so you guys get access to all our advertiser inventory, no matter what ad unit you decide to use. And we're really excited because we've seen publishers do pretty cool things with our native ads. Here's three examples. Um, the Huffington Post integrated a cool vertical scrolling design that fits the way they showcase articles to their users. Zepto Labs, the creator of Cut the Rope, created this funky modified banner that appears at the end of a level at a really natural transition point. And Shazam created a native unit that fits seamlessly among their other content cards. And I'll talk about some of their best practices a little bit later. And these are just some of the interesting implementations we're seeing every day. We see new developers with really cool native ads that are working well for them. So yes, you have all these different ad formats, which gives you a lot of flexibility to make sure the ads are fitting into the design of your app experience. Um, but performance can vary based on the ad unit you choose and then where you decide to place that unit in your app. So let's talk a little bit about optimizing your ad units. So let me give you an example of a placement that is maybe not optimal, not, not the best. So let's say you have a banner ad at the bottom of your app, uh, common place you see banner ads a lot of times are at the top, and let's say you have it next to a button that your users are clicking frequently. This banner is likely to get a lot of unintentional clicks if it's near something else that users are clicking, and then sort of ends up being a poor experience for your users um, and also isn't, you know, it's not helping advertisers connect to the users they're trying to reach uh, because people aren't clicking on that because they're interested in the ad or the brand, they're clicking on it by accident. Uh, this is an experience we want to help you avoid. So one of the things we're thinking a lot about is conversion, meaning users actually taking the call to, to action in the ad. We care about conversion because we want your users to see ads that are relevant to them and then we want those ads to be effective. This is what helps everyone in the ecosystem, advertisers, users, and then publishers. So keeping conversion in mind when you're picking what ad unit you want to use and how you use it is a good guiding principle that should help with performance. So let's run through some specific best practices based on our different ad types. So for banners. We recommend you choose a refresh rate and a placement that get, gives users time to digest your ads so that they're intentionally clicking on them. Um, making sure the banner is not located too close to interactive units in your app, so this is from the example I just talked about, um, that's something that you wanna do again to try to minimize unintentional clicks. Also, showing banners to users in places in your app that lend themselves to additional content where users can choose to click intentionally, um, again, will, will cut down on accidental clicks. For interstitials, many of you guys, especially game developers, are likely familiar with this and using interstitials in this way. Um, one of the common places to put interstitials is at natural breaks in gameplay or app usage. The common place you'll see them is between levels, um, but just thinking about um, where there is a pause or a moment where users are going to be able to intake new content is a good thing to think about with interstitials. Another thing to think about is frequency. You can test out how often you want to show users ads. So for example, two ads per half an hour, just an example, could possibly yield optimal performance without disrupting your user experience too much and just throwing interstitials all over the place. So that's something to, to work on. 
for native. Um, for native, it's all about testing. So some of our developers have found it's better to have an ad that's consistent with the look of their app. And, you know, Claire has shown you an example or two of that. Others have found that highlighting the ad in sort of a standout or exciting way uh, yields great performance for them. So uh, learning about this through testing is really important because native ads are so dependent on the individual experience within your app. Um, what we recommend doing is just trying out multiple pla multiple placements, making changes, and then watching how performance responds. Great. So let me give you guys some examples of our current audience network publishers and what they've found to be successful. Our friends at Glue Mobile, the guys who built Kim Kardashian Hollywood, which probably many of you guys have played, whether you admit it or not, um, are seeing great results with the audience network. In fact, they're seeing two times the CPMs on the audience network when compared to other networks. They're also able to show less ads because they found that the ads from the audience network are more engaging than other ad networks as well. So let me share some of their learnings. Glue recommends displaying ads during a natural break in gameplay. They chose to use interstitial ads over standard banners for this game as they catch the eye at a time when a user is naturally taking a break. To avoid disrupting the user experience, Glue only displays ads when a user has finished a level or completed an action and there's a natural break. They also leverage frequency capping to ensure users are not seeing too, ads too often in a particular game session or play period. Although they regularly analyze data to see for which apps, how often they should show ads and what's most effective, um, as a general rule of thumb, they usually don't show a user an ad more than once every 15 minutes or so. Another great example is Shazam. They were one of our early adopters of native ads and have seen really good results. Um, in fact, they're seeing over a 37% increase in revenue from ad networks from the audience network. They also just launched a new update to their app where they created a very sleek scrolling native integration. So you guys should go download that and, and check it out as some inspiration. Shazam recommends streamlining the user experience by making ads consistent with the app design. They experimented with borders, padding, styling, and fonts, and then determined that consistency of these factors with the other visual elements was the most effective for them. They also measured response rates to different positions on the page. So Shazam tried having ads show up in different pages, different places, and what they found is having the ad appear in the music track results page in their app above the fold, but after the first layer of content was the most effective. So clearly, you can't just take exactly this and apply it to your app, but I think what it really stresses is that you need to test both what the ad looks like and where it appears. So that means different, trying different pages, trying different places, and seeing what performs best for you. So we launched Audience Network in October, and we've been adding a ton of publishers since then. Um, Claire has talked about some of the partners um, in some of our case studies, um, but we were also working with people like IGN, Zynga, Cheetah Mobile, MyFitnessPal, um, and, and tons more. So let's recap a little bit. Um, the audience network is available for iOS and Android apps. And just to recap on the product, it's enabling you as a developer to show ads in your app that leverage Facebook's extensive targeting capabilities. It also gives you access to the 1.5 million advertisers on the Facebook platform and gives you multiple ad formats to choose from to make sure you can match that ad to the look and feel of your app. So how do you get started? As I mentioned earlier, implementation has been really easy for, for all the partners we've worked with, and you just need to, one, install the SDK. Um, two, um, once you have the SDK installed, it's really easy to place the ads in your app. Uh, and, then, and then three is to get paid. <laughs> Great. So we're super excited about this product. It's performing really well. We've had good feedback from our, our publisher partners, and we're hoping that you guys will join us. So you can apply for the audience network at this link below that you see on your screen. And um, we'll get back to you really quickly. Um, if you can't remember this link, you can go to the Facebook developer site and, and look up the audience network. And we have a lot of product information there. We have our docs there. And you can apply um, straight from that page as well. So it's my Oprah moment of the day. I guess get to give you guys a car. Just kidding. Uh, but we do have a, a little giveaway for you guys because we're we're happy that you joined us as part of this webinar. So if you apply and go live by December 31st, we'll give you guys a $250 ad coupon. So what you need to do is 
email katiejs at fb.com with the code ANWeb. So again, that's katiejs, the email address on your screen with the code ANWeb. So we've come to the, the portion of questions. Thank you so much, everybody, for typing in your questions. We've been aggregating them, and we're going to take five to ten minutes now and, and answer some questions for you. Uh, so I'll pass it over to Katie for our first question. Okay, it looks like people have general questions around um, what type of ads will run in your app and then maybe more specifically what controls you have um, as far as what ads your users are going to be seeing. So um, to take a step back in answering that question, we obviously believe that ads should contribute to and, you know, with our native format, be consistent with the overall user experience. Um, and so every every ad that runs in the audience network is also eligible to run on Facebook. So that's kind of like an important backdrop. This means that the ads your users will see in your app are subject to our strict ad policies. All the same ad policies that apply on Facebook will apply to ads in the audience network. So this means our ads pass through our rigor, rigorous, proactive, and reactive re review processes um, and you know, we make sure that these ads are basically high quality, brand safe, um, and, you know, in compliance with any applicable laws. So th that's kind of a backdrop that helps you, like, feel confident that the ads are high quality. Um, but there's obviously instances in which you guys may prefer a particular ad or type of ad um, not run in your app, regardless of whether it meets our policies. So two of the features we have um, available are we have a, a filtering feature that allows you to filter specific categories. So I think we have a little over like a dozen different categories, things like dating, gaming, politics, things like that. So you may decide, uh, you know, for your specific app, you may decide you don't want any dating or say like politics ads in your app. And you can toggle those and exclude those categories of apps. Um, so that's really handy. Another thing a lot of our partners are using is a feature that we have that allows you to exclude specific domains. So um, one of the use cases we hear a lot is partners who want to exclude competitors' ads from showing in their app. So you can, again, you can actually specify domains and exclude um, ads from those domains from showing in your app. So those things together with the partners that we've worked with um, have, I think, been really helpful and sufficient in, in helping you um, curate the ads that are going to be in your app while also letting us fall back on the targeting that we have so that we're showing people the right ads. Okay, so Clara, do you want to go yeah. to the next question? Sounds great. Looks like... Um, people are asking about fill rate and expectations around fill rate on the audience network. So just to um, level something right off the bat, you do not need to have Facebook login to use the audience network. So whether you have login or not is not going to impact your fill rate um, or your ability to use the audience network in general. And so everyone's on the same page. I, let's clarify what fill rate is. Fill rate is the ratio of fill over requests. So this number lets you know what percent of the time we were turning an ad after you request an ad from Facebook. So fill rate is based on a number of things, but mostly based on two main criteria, whether we can match your user to a Facebook user and the advertiser demand for each user. So with the audience network, when your app requests an ad from Facebook for a user, we match that user to a Facebook user using the device ID or the advertising ID. If we can match a Facebook user to that device, we are then able to show them an ad similar to one they would have seen on Facebook. And this is provided that we have demand for that user. If we can't match a Facebook user to that device, we won't fill that ad request. And so these criteria will result in a fill rate that's less than 100% for your app on the audience network. But it also means that the ads your users see will be more targeted to that individual. And we hope this results in higher engagement and a better experience for your users. Great, so Katie, we'll take the next question. Awesome. Um, so people are asking about revenue share. So what is, what is your revenue split in the audience network? So the audience network doesn't disclose uh, our revenue split. Um, that said, the numbers that you see in your dashboard, so uh, when you become a publisher, you have this handy dashboard that shows you all of your metrics. It shows you, as Claire just talked about, your fill rate and, then, and your revenue. So this dashboard reflects your revenue share, and that should be a number that you're really happy with. Um, in again, working with all the partners that we've onboarded so far and in looking at our numbers, we really believe the audience network will perform comparably or better uh, than other networks. So the numbers should speak for themselves and that should be something that you feel really good about. 
All right. So it looks like we have a question about um, mediation layers. So Katie spoke a little bit about this earlier, um, but just so we're clear, the audience network works with most popular mediation layers, and most mediation layers have already built adapters for the audience network. So if you're looking for guidelines on, on how to implement the audience network into your mediation layer, um, you can go to the audience network site, and there you'll find links to the guidelines for this mediation uh, for the mediation layers. Um, if for the small on the small chance that the mediation layer does not support the audience network they're using, you should ask them to build an adapter that works with the audience network SDK, um, and hopefully get that set up soon. We're encouraging all mediation layers to um, build adapters for the audience network. Cool. Great. Um, let's see. So we have a question, can we set a minimum CPM? Um, at this point, we, we don't allow people to set a, min, a minimum CPM. We hope that you're happy with the CPMs that you are seeing. And you can also, if you have a mediation layer set up, um, you can also default back to another ad network or an exchange. Great, I think that's all the questions. Thank you guys so much um, for listening in. And we hope to have you guys as partners as part of the audience network soon.